this is from 40 to 50 years of observation and Mark and I getting our heads together and comparing notes on a daily basis, sometimes two and three times a day, saying what you see move today, what you see and move, what time did they move, how many did you see move, did you see any rack bucks, what were the does doing, blah, blah, blah. So this was many, many years of, of uh, a lot of brain trust right here and Matt was really the one that kind of said, hey, why don't we bring this to light and we did, we brought it, brought it to fruition but it does change slightly from latitude and longitude. Uh, it changes slightly with firearm seasons, how they affect deer movement. But for the most part, it is a tool. And whitetail hunting is about stacking the odds. And we do that on a regular basis. It's one big gigantic chess match. Some days you win, some days you lose. Uh, checkmate is the most fun. <laughs> you know, you can harvest a big deer and these 13 phases help you by all means. But we'll start out by saying, you know, we call it a new beginning. Obviously, you know, when you say a new beginning, what's happening? That's a really tough time to hunt. You know, thermals are a big, big influence that time of year. A lot of times in the evenings, it's hot. You don't want to go, you're sweating. So, you know, you're emitting a tremendous amount of scent. So scent control is a big, big deal that time of year, but they're on green food source. Typically that time of year, if you've got some uh, green soybeans or you've got some really nice looking Clover Plus, or you got something else, uh, an alternate food source, it's a good place to be and it's a good time to harvest a big deer. The second phase, greener pastures. You know, they start in that first phase, then they stay on green. They, they really, really do hit that green because at that time of the year, and I'm talking dates of say September through, late part of September into the first two weeks of October, when bean fields start to uh, turn and defoliate. You know, and a lot of things turn that time of year. You're starting to see some things really start to change colors. And you may not be in an area where there's a lot of tillable. We're fortunate or blessed in the fact that we're here in the Midwest where there is a lot of tillable fields. So there's always something that's turning brown that time of year. And Mark and I talk about green to green transfer all the time. We're gonna give them an alternative food source. No matter where you're at, if you've got a green food source that time of year, it's always productive. All right, then we get into phase three, that October lull. That's what we're falling into right now. And, and uh, I really truly believe that our lull started a few days ago. You know, we monitor this on a really, really regular basis because we hunt each and every day. And we've done it for the last 25 or 30 years. So all of a sudden you start looking at your notes from 10 years ago and you say, you know what, this is pretty consistent. And that's exactly what's happened over, over the last number of years. We recognize that the October lull in the Midwest is, is about as boring as it gets. And what's funny is when they go into that October lull, they still have that, the smaller neck, they're a little bit sagging as far as the skin and, and some of those other things that are indicative of a whitetail coming out of a summer pattern. They come out of the October lull, their necks swole up, they, you know, they look a little bit different. They're all of a sudden starting to put on that winter coat. So it's a tremendous phase where you don't see much buck activity and then all of a sudden, boom, you get into the pre-lock and you got these giants running all over, big racks, all of a sudden they look a little different, they got different posture, they'll lay ears back when they see another deer. It's a fun, fun time to hunt. Uh, you, you go through the pre-lock and then all of a sudden you get into high anticipation. You know, this, this phase is from November the 2nd through November the 5th here in our area in the Midwest. And uh, all of a sudden these deer are starting to move you know, they're expanding those home core areas where they're starting to go a little bit further in the range and they're looking for that first available estrus doe. They're doing that in the pre-lock as well as high anticipation. Those two phases, those whitetails are really, really up and looking. And oddly enough, the oldest bucks, the most mature bucks, always somehow snip out those first available estrus does. It's interesting, they, they, they do it on a, a really regimented basis uh, where they don't run onto the field. They just do it on a repetitive basis. They may stay up a little bit later at night. They go a little bit later to bed. Their, their home core area starts to widen and get a little bit bigger. But all of a sudden when the lockdown phase hits, those first available estrus does are with the most mature bucks in your area. And that's exactly what happens. We see a little phase just prior to that that we call buck parade. You know, that buck parade is when they all get up on their feet. And it's not uncommon to see two and three and a half year old deer, a uh, year and a halves, you know, just looking. All of them are out looking. And that period is short as well. It's the 6th through the 10th here in the Midwest. You know, November the 6th through the November the 10th, you're going to see a lot of bucks up on their feet looking, just trying to find those available estrus does. Then you get into that lockdown phase. And that one's the one that is a killer. 
the 11th through the 15th of November here in the Midwest, and that can slide a day or two a little bit. But that period is uh, it's it's tough because you've had a little bit of a, a, a you know kind of a encouraging moment where you've seen all these bucks up on their feet and looking, and then all of a sudden all you start seeing are immature bucks, year and a half, two and a half, and maybe a few three-year-olds still looking for available estrus does, and those mature deer are locked down. And typically those periods may last four, five, sometimes six days where you don't see, you just don't see a good rack buck and you're wondering why. You're sitting there scratching your head. Okay, I've got him on trail cameras. Why can't I find him right now? My Reconic says he should be here and yet I can't find him. Well, a lot of times they'll take him out into a remote area, a really, really odd place at the, you know, maybe at the head of a draw or, or out in a ditch or somewhere where you would least expect it where they're locked down with a doe and they won't let her they won't just won't turn her loose until that breeding cycle is completed and the doe is receptive. All right, then we get into phase eight, which is desperately seeking. You know, that's one of the phases that we enjoy the most because they have had those first available estrus does and they're on to that second cycle looking for the next available estrus doe. And uh, it becomes somewhat of a frantic movement. It's a short little window. You know, we got it shown here 16th through the 19th. So you're only looking at about a three day period, but man, is it a productive time to be in the timber when they they finished with that first round and they're looking for that second round. Uh, you can find a lot of big deer up on their feet and looking, you just have to be in the timber to, to see it happening. All right, once that hits, here's another phase that becomes extremely tough to hunt called a party's over. You know, November the 20th through the 25th, it just dies. You know, all of a sudden you're sitting there scratching your head like, okay, I just saw a tremendous number of deer up on their feet looking, where did they go? Man, it ends. It's like a light switch event. It happens each and every year. Took as many years to recognize it, but Mark and I compared notes for a long, long time and said, it just died. It literally just ended. You know, it's almost a recharge your battery type phase where they lay down, they're wore out. They've been running and looking for a month, month and a half, whatever it may be, and their batteries are just draining. All right, that's a tough phase. All right, then phase 10, we get into green revisited. All of a sudden, we start seeing these deer coming back onto a green food source. Oftentimes, it may be a volunteer green food source, some type of trefoil or something that you might see out in the middle of a CRP field or, or maybe some switchgrass that you've got planted, but it's that new growth, those little bitty shoots where they're requiring moisture uh, it's pulling a lot of minerals out of the soil. It's highly palatable, but it's a, a small green food source that, that is new growth or regrowth, and they're on it like you can't imagine. So that's a really, really good time to kill a big mature deer because their batteries are drained. They're not worried so much about breeding and running and, and going. They're worried about replenishing and refurbishing that, that drained battery. And that's exactly what happens in that, in that green revisited phase. We really like hunting in that period. All right, then all of a sudden phase 11, waiting on a front. We typically will be getting some cold fronts that time of the year. You know, it may be a major, major snow event. It might be snow, it might be uh, sleet. Any of those raid events are really, really good if you have a food source available to go to. And if you've got some available food, whether it's standing corn, standing soybeans, a beautiful lush biologic field, by all means stay on that food because uh, if there's a huge front, there's going to be deer come to that food store. So waiting on a front is really, really one of our productive phases if you get it through that period. Then last but not least, feedback phase 12. Here we are getting late, late in the season, December the 9th through the 21st, just prior to Christmas holidays there. Always a good time to go in and harvest a big, big whitetail because food is number one. That time of year, you really wanna have available food source. It might be a mass crop. You know, you may have white oak acorns that are, that are just littered all over the ground, then don't overlook those. It might be chestnuts. It could be any type of mass crop that is still available at that, that end or that period, the ending that right before Christmas. Great time to be on top of food right there. All right, then the grand finale. Here's where it gets really, really tough. You know the season's winding down. You know things are, are slowing down. Your body's about as run down as theirs are, and uh, food is still important, but uh, you're just hoping and praying that you're gonna see a big deer and you try to bop one before the season ends. Food is still a really, really important factor.